The Biden administration might be changing its strategy on Ukraine, says a media report. What has led to this transformation? Junior doctors in the United Kingdom are set to continue their months-long protest in 2024 as well. What are their demands? This is The Daily Debrief. These are your stories for the day. And before we go any further, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. An article in the US media outlet Politico says that the Biden administration is, and I quote, quietly shifting its strategy in Ukraine. Now, according to this article, the new plan is to improve Ukraine's position in an eventual negotiation to end the war. And for this, giving up parts of Ukraine to Russia is on the table. This comes in the aftermath of the failed Ukrainian counteroffensive and increasing hesitation in the US-led coalition to bear the costs of the war. What are these factors and why have they led to a rethink if there is one? We go to Abdul for more. Abdul, interesting article coming in the Politico talking about uh, uh, some signs of rethinking in the Biden administration. Now, the war, it's been quite a long time since this war broke out and even very early on, there were signs of, there were, there were actually negotiations taking place which were subsequently sabotaged. But, uh, you know, what does the overall situation in Ukraine look like now that has led to these reports? Of course, they're not entirely confirmed yet, but nonetheless. Inside Ukraine, there are uh, many things happening, but primarily since the uh, you can say the failure of the so-called counteroffensive, which was launched uh, <clears throat> earlier this year, uh, the, there has been a complete failure in kind of uh, in that uh, uh, operation uh, in which billions of dollars were spent by the Western forces, by the U.S., by the European powers. And uh, they sent ammunition, they sent every other uh, uh, aid possible to Ukrainians, but Ukrainians fails to kind of take advantage of it and kind of push back uh, Russian advantages, uh, uh, advances on its eastern and southern borders. Um, uh, and that basically has created a possibility. Apart from this, there is also uh, uh, widespread allegations of corruption in which uh, Zelensky government has been uh, uh, allegedly involved. Uh, apparently, they have been uh, accused of um, uh, sharpening off uh, the war funds, uh, the aid which is coming from across the world for their own, the leaders of uh, Zelensky's uh, government to kind of use it for their own personal benefits. They have been also they have also been accused of using the uh, the the weapons and the ammunition sent for the war for, uh, uh, against Russia to kind of uh, for kind of reselling it to, in other parts of the uh, world. So all of this, apart from the fact that the economy is collapsing, apart from the fact that the overall situation of the common Ukrainian is basically worse. Uh, in fact, there is a new debate happening about the. Uh, Zelensky's pro, uh, plan to recruit 500,000 new uh, uh, soldiers uh, for for the front because they don't they are uh, feeling the crunch of uh, manpower uh, uh, on the front and therefore they need new recruits. But that would mean that the the overall age for the recruitment in the uh, forces would go down drastically, and this may kind of have a, a very profound impact on the overall Ukrainian society. So this also has created a situation. So the, given the fact that the, due to the now the war, which is nearing two years, has kind of completely uh, uh, messed up uh, the Ukrainian, so Ukrainian society, Ukrainian economy, and the government has failed to deliver on any of its uh, uh, attempts to kind of, uh, particularly on the counteroffensive, and uh, allegation of corruption basically has created a situation where there is a growing, uh, you can say, uh, uh, kind of dejection uh, in the overall mission to kind of uh, which with which the Ukrainians were pushed in the early days of the war against Russia, and uh, that is reflected in the overall uh, kind of. Uh, a decline in the popularity of Zelensky as well, and the decline uh, uh, and the uh, growing criticism of the government in Ukraine. So overall situation in Ukraine, uh, both politically and economically, uh, of course, uh, we are not talking about militarily, which is obvious, uh, is quite uh, uh, drastic. And that basically uh, has become much more uh, difficult uh, following the uh, recent uh, setbacks in terms of the uh, West's reluctance 
to uh, extend the aid program uh, uh, in the country. Well, that was my second question because a lot of these discussions are taking place in the, due to the fact that the international coalition that gathered around this war seems now to be far more uncertain, if not fractured. There is serious concern in many of these countries. So could you maybe take us through what is happening among the components of this coalition as well? Well, uh, the war in, uh, war in Ukraine was primarily funded by both the US and its European allies. We can generally say European Union. Uh, and both of these con uh, both of these uh, sections uh, in the last few months, if you see, their attempts to kind of extend the uh, the funding has been blocked for various domestic reasons. Uh, uh, and in the case of U U.S. and in the case of European Union, because of the uh, disagreement of certain countries uh, towards the the whole idea itself. Uh, so, for example, in U.S., uh, uh, we all know that how Republicans have basically been blocking the sixty billion dollar uh, aid program uh, to Ukraine, despite the fact that Zelensky was invited to U.S. He met uh, the Republicans, despite all those attempts. Uh, the there has been no development, uh, and 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 there is. It seems that the Joe Biden administration has decided not to push for it at this hour, primarily given the fact that the, the, the continuation of the conflict in the way it is happening is basically having an impact on its possibilities of re-election. And, and it's also having an uh, impact on the overall uh, uh, capacity to deliver on the other promises with which the Joe Biden government had come to power against uh, the, the massive uh, popularity of Donald Trump uh, during the uh, last elections. So that is one uh, reason in US. In European Union, uh, the 50 billion uh, euro aid was blocked after uh, Hungary applied uh, veto, uh, and that basically meant that uh, there is a complete blockade. So European Union is trying to kind of uh, revise the uh, aid plan, and of course with a reduced amount of 20 billion euros. But whether that will succeed or not uh, is uh, is uh, is a thing to uh, to be kind of we need to see, wait and see. Uh, <clears throat> even if that 20 billion dollar uh, comes that will not be enough uh, for the uh, the, um, uh, the amount which the Ukrainians need at this hour to kind of uh, uh, fight against the uh, uh, against the Russian uh, push. Now uh, there was a, a report that how uh, recently on uh, on Tuesday it seems that uh, on Monday sorry uh, Russia uh, kind of uh, recaptured a, a new territory and this is the first development in many months uh, where the Russia has been able to advance further. Uh, inside uh, Ukraine, and that basically is a uh, is a sign that the overall uh, uh, Ukrainian defense vis-a-vis uh, -vis Russia is falling primarily because of the aid, uh, lack of aid, lack of ammunition. Uh, in uh, as a you can say contingency, US had cleared a twenty five million dollar aid, the last batch of aid which was approved previously, uh, recently. But that is, of, as I said before, is a very small amount and very small uh, uh, aid in comparison to the need the, uh, the Ukrainians have at this hour, uh, particularly during the winter. Abdul, thank you so much for that update. The Junior Doctors Committee of the British Medical Association has announced a six-day strike starting January 3rd if the government does not heed its demand for better restoration, for pay restoration and better working conditions. The doctors have already been on strike for 28 days over the course of the year, but the government does not listen to their demands at all. Other personnel in the NHS have also been struggling on similar demands. We go to Anna to understand the situation. Anna, thank you so much for joining us. So throughout the year, we have seen British junior doctors, of course, raising a series of issues uh, towards the government. The government not responding in a positive manner. We have seen ag industrial action also taking place and they've also said that, you know, more might happen. So let's first talk about what some of these demands are. Why really are these doctors protesting? Well, the demands have remained the same throughout the year. So if we look back uh, sometime in March, uh, but if we take into consideration other health workers also previously, uh, health workers across England, across uh, the United Kingdom have warned that their salaries uh, were not high enough to allow them to lead uh, a healthy and uh, dignified life. So this has been uh, has been an issue throughout the year, uh, and now what we are seeing is that while other health workers might have come up uh, to an agreement together with the government, at least some sort of agreement, junior doctors are, are refusing 
to accept the offers that the health ministry has been uh, has been tabling because they they're saying that throughout the years uh, they have uh, they have experienced what amounts to about 35% uh, of uh, of um, of a pay, of pay cut so uh, this makes one of the biggest groups of health workers uh, in the uh, in the in the NHS uh, one of the lowest paid ones uh, if we look at the hourly wages and so they're saying that of course you know this is not uh, it's uh, it's not something that can continue for much longer and that essentially people are both leaving and having very serious health issues because of uh, of the working conditions that they they're being placed in what does uh, what, what what does the coming year look forward as far as many of these doctors are concerned and you know how do you see this action progressing well judging from uh, what what has been out uh, since uh, since the last few months uh, it looks like they're going to continue with the actions and that they're not really going to relent uh, despite the fact that the government has been refusing to uh, to come up with uh, uh, with a decent offer so uh, just in 2023 they um, now they, they would have been on strike on and off for more than, than 30 days uh, throughout the year. Uh, this is unprecedented in industrial action in the NHS. Uh, and if we look uh, at next week, in case the government does not uh, agree uh, to have the uh, to continue the conversation with junior doctors uh, in a way that they uh, they find acceptable, they're looking at uh, uh, at least six days strike uh, at the very very beginning of the year. Uh, what is known to be a very stressful period for the for the NHS uh, when the demand is high, when people need access to healthcare services uh, because of cold, but also because of other reasons. So, uh, you know, if uh, ju just judging from the beginning of the year, it looks like it's going to be a very active one for for junior doctors, uh, and rightly so because uh, what uh, they have been experiencing throughout the year is a complete. Uh, you know, uh, a blockade from the government to actually have a meaningful discussion. Uh, they have been sent uh, sent away with uh, with offers that don't even begin to address the problems that they have been experiencing when it comes to to salary levels over the uh, over the last years. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, they have been uh, again and again. Uh, they have been blamed. For the action that they were uh, they were taking, uh, and the government saying that of course they they have been behaving unreasonably uh, and uh, have not had their uh, patients' best interest at heart. Uh, of course, if we look at the statements published by uh, by the junior doctors trade uh, union, uh, we see that essentially what they are doing is is striking for the pa patients' best interest because the current government's policy as well of, uh, as the policies of the governments that came before uh, has been very detrimental to patient safety, uh, has caused numerous uh, postponements and uh, backlogs of, uh, of treatments. Uh, and what they're trying to do is essentially secure a health workforce that is able to, to care for the patients in the way they, they need it and they, they deserve it. Right, and in this context, also generally wanted to ask you the question about the NHS itself. You know, it's been a long year of protests by many sections of the NHS. So how do you sort of see what has been happening with uh, the NHS over the past few years and especially this year? Well, uh, it, it has been a very active year, but uh, I think that, you know, it's uh, it's a sign that the, the warnings that have been uh, have been circulated before were actually right. Uh, what the NHS has experienced over the years is a creeping sort of privatization. Uh, they have not been outwardly pr privatized, but of course they have. You know, uh, we have uh, we have seen that health workers have been treated very badly throughout the pandemic, even before. Uh, it's not only about the pay. Uh, it's not only about the salary. It's also about the working conditions, uh, the uh, patients and uh, staffing ratios that uh, that they're seeing. Uh, it's also uh, about the treatment of uh, workers who are not uh, from who are not the first type of health workers that you think of. So if we look at the outsourced workers, the cleaners, the porters, uh, the kitchen staff uh, who have been on protest for months uh, in some cases because they were demanding um, fair um, fair working conditions. Uh, in line with what uh, with what their NHS peers uh, were looking at, but 
essentially, uh, the NHS is still looking at a very difficult period. So they're, they're facing with unprecedented uh, waiting times. Of course, they're struggling with staff leaving, emigrating uh, elsewhere because of the working conditions. Uh, so what gives hope is, of course, that there's a strong movement behind the defense of the NHS. Uh, the people in Britain still uh, still consider the NHS to be something to be proud of, something to defend. Health workers do so too. So that's something that uh, should lead us to believe that in, in the next year, the fight for the NHS will continue. Right, Anna, thank you so much for that update. And that's all we have in this episode. We'll be back tomorrow. In the meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you.